hear me now. <laughs> it looks like I was on mute. But good afternoon, everyone. It's Amelia. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, as you know, we are um, having some unprecedented times in our economy today. And I want to speak from the bottom of my heart on how real estate pros, agents, brokers, investors can maneuver throughout this particular economic crisis that we are in. Um, if you're joining me, I'll also be watching from my phone, trying to watch out for comments. So please say hello, tell me where you're from. And again, I would love to thank Gerald and Alexandra for allowing me to grace their house flipping family platform to share some information with you today. Okay, we will have a brief presentation. This presentation will cover um, the SBA Economic Injury Disaster Loan Fund. We'll go into details on how it works and how it's also applicable to you. So if you have questions, again, please drop those questions in the comment box and I'll be sure to um, address those questions as they come up. Um, and again, I would love to know where you're from. Uh, please drop that in the comment box because you never know, like I've been seeing a lot of grants, a lot of other um, bridge loan information for certain cities, states and municipalities. So if I see where you're from, it may trigger um, something that I can share with you to help you um, throughout this time. But just so we can stay on track, I, I don't want to hold up too much of your day. We are definitely going to go ahead and get started. So if you're watching by a, um, if you comment one in the comment box and let me know how many of you um, are, are um, following what's happening in the economy, and two, are aware of how you can potentially receive some of the funding the SBA has designated for times such as this. Please put a comment in the, in the box below and let me know. Bye. All right, so we have Florida here. Hey, Earl, thanks for watching. And I realize there may be a little delay, but again, just kind of add your city and state in when you have a chance. That way, if something triggers my memory, we can actually review that. But I'm also going to go ahead and share my screen so we can get started with the presentation. Because again, I want you to know exactly how this applies to you and how you can participate. Let's see. All right, and I'm gonna continue to watch the comments. Hey, thanks for joining me, Missy from Indiana. All right, so we're going to discuss how you can potentially take advantage of the $7 billion in funding to receive up to $2 million in loans from the Small Business Administration to get through COVID-19, okay? Um, so it doesn't matter if you file taxes as a sole proprietor. It does not matter if you file as an S-Corp, as a C-Corp, or a partnership. You are... Um, eligible for funding. Now, there are some industries that are not eligible for funding, but for the most part, 95% of the small businesses in the country are eligible um, to, to apply for funding. So it doesn't matter if you, if you um, have multiple real, um, rental properties. It doesn't matter if you have a property management company. If you have been impacted financially due to the coronavirus, you are eligible to apply for the funding. So let's talk a little bit more about um, how this works and um, get into more details. You know, so again, we, we have disasters. You know, um, I'm from the South. I split my time between Montgomery, Alabama and Atlanta, Georgia. And just a few months ago, we had, or actually just last month in the city of Nashville, Nashville experienced um, tornadoes that kind of ripped through the city in the middle of the night and caused a lot of damage, caused um, financial hardships for some businesses. Well, guess what? 
when, when these type of disasters happen, the president of the United States declares an area a disaster area and this particular SBA loan springs into life, okay? This is when this particular SBA loan is activated. He has also declared a national um, disaster due to the coronavirus and it is impacting the entire United States. So right now we are experiencing um, situations where businesses are literally shutting their doors overnight. Literally, they're in business one day, the next day, they are not. Or the next day, they experience a drop in revenue of 50 and sometimes even 75%. And we do not want you to be on the sidelines. We want to make sure that you're taking advantage of the opportunities there are in the marketplace for you to recover if you are experiencing economic hardships, okay? So right now, we're helping anyone that's been impacted by COVID-19 to apply for this SBA type funding. Right now, all 50 states are covered. As of Friday of last week, it was only about 43, 44 states. Now all 50 states are covered um, in this legislation. Now you still would need to check your county. It's still based on counties and some counties may not be covered just yet, but in essence, all 50 states are covered. Now, the last time we had a major expenditure from this particular loan fund was due to the BP oil spill. How many remember the BP oil spill? Type yes in the comments for me if you remember the BP oil spill. That is by far, has been one of the most expensive disasters um, on record. And it just affected the coast, the Gulf Coast states over to Texas. So it affected uh, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, Louisiana, on over to Georgia, and it affected seafood, the seafood industry throughout the country because several um, vendors and restaurants get their seafood from the Gulf. And so when that hit, obviously you had tourism decline, you had hotels declining, bed and breakfast going out of business, you had a lot of smaller businesses who normally make their income and revenue you know, during the summertime decline, shutter their doors. And so this particular loan, again, sprung into effect. So people could take advantage of this money. And guess what? When it was all said and done, this fund ended up spending about $54 billion, $54 billion um, in, in, in loan money and grant money to cover that particular settlement for the BP oil spill. So it was a lot of money. Um, and guess what? Right now, they've already activated um, seven or eight billion dollars just for small businesses right now. And there is a bill right now in Congress to increase that number to three hundred billion dollars. Allow me to repeat that. There is a bill right now in Congress to increase the funding amount to $300 billion. And I will share with you exactly why that's important to know. So as you can imagine, right now, seven, eight billion have been allocated. You have a lot of people applying for this money right now. Um, 54 billion was spent on the BP oil spill. And that was just a particular area along the Gulf Coast. This is impacting the entire United States. And actually it's impacting, impacting us globally because some people have you know, vendors and workers in other countries. So as you can imagine, we are going to far exceed this $54 billion that the fund spent um, to fight the BP oil spill. So just like with the BP oil spill, you obviously have a lot of people applying right now for this money. So we want to make sure that our clients are submitting a flawless application so they can they have a chance at competing with this $8 billion because right now the SBA is overwhelmed. You know, we don't want your application to be pushed to the back um, because information was missing or maybe something didn't add up between the numbers on the application versus your actual financial statements that you have to load with your, with your documentation. So we want to make sure that our clients submit a flawless application and that um, they put in a really good chance of receiving the revenue that they need to sustain during this economic period of uncertainty. And just so you're aware, we, we have been advising our clients um, to make arrangements to have a decrease, a significant dec decrease in revenue for the next six to nine months, okay, for the next six to nine months. 
um, because this is going to create a trickle down effect. We're going to have a number of um, businesses that go out of business and therefore, you know, people are not going to be able to make their mortgage payments, pay rent, um, pay other expenses associated with their livelihood. So we, we fully anticipate that it's going to be closer to that nine to 12 month mark before we start making a full recovery. So how did I get started? I'm a small business um, tax and wealth strategist. Um, I've been in the industry for a little bit over 15 years. 13 of those years have been servicing uh, small business owners. Uh, I vowed back in 2008 that I would never uh, witness what happened to my clients in 2008 again. Uh, thank goodness I did not witness that this time, but 97% of my clients are small business owners or real estate investors. And so we are doing a lot more contingency planning to get through this transition right now. Um, and my background is working for boutique investment firms that offer accounting and advanced tax support for small business owners. And so now I get to bring this information to the greater audience at large so they can understand how this is going to impact them long term. And if you're just joining, please type in the box below where you're, where you're joining from, where you're watching from. Um, give me a city, a county, and a state, because again, um, different municipalities have different um, programs and grants and loan funds available. So something may jar memory that I can share with you. So how exactly does this work? So you are required to submit your most recent federal income tax return your personal financial statement, a schedule of liabilities listing all fixed debts, and obviously you're going to um, complete the SBA um, paperwork. Now, before I continue with the other documentations, what's really important for you to know and understand is that this is not a traditional SBA loan, okay? This loan does not, you do not have to go through an intermediary like a different financial institution to apply for this loan you are applying directly with the SBA and the United States Department of the Treasury, okay? This loan is directly through them. So there is no middle person in terms of a financial institution that you have to go through. You're going to also need a year-end profit and loss statement as well as a balance sheet for the 2019 tax year. You will need a current year-to-date profit and loss statement and your monthly sales figures and projections that show um, the economic injury that you're projecting to, to obtain during this crisis. So how our process typically works is we typically have a strategy session call where we're learning more about your business, um, we're learning more about your investments, how you uh, operate within the world of real estate. We send you a list of documents um, within 48 hours that we'll need to build out your loan application. We have another kickoff call within five to seven days after we review all of the documentation, make sure we have everything that we need. If there's something that we're missing, we let you know. So you can either go back to your accountant and have those documents, um, have those documents amended or whatever process that you would take to um, have those documents generated with the correct information. And then obviously we submit the loan application and we handle correspondence. Uh, for you as well. So again, the first thing that we do is documentation and review and the assessment. So you submit all of our docu all the documents. Uh, one of the CPAs on our team looks at all of your financial statements and your records to make sure everything balances, everything makes sense, and we know exactly what we're asking the SBA for. We complete these loan documents on your behalf. Uh, we help you with your personal financial statement to make sure everything is accurate and that we have the information necessary for the underwriting team to make a decision, not on the second time, not on the third time, but on the first time. And then, of course, assistance and addressing responses from the SBA. Okay, so that's really, really critical um, is having that backup support in case the SBA underwriter has any questions or concerns they can come to us and we can address those questions for them. All right, so for that consultation, it does require a $100 non-refundable deposit. And for Gerald's group, we're offering it at half the cost for $1,125. So anyone else, they see this, they will get the $2,250 price tag. We're offering it 
to Gerald and Alexandria's house filth and family group for half that cost at $1,125. All right, um, how about a new business seven months old? Seven months old is fine. You still should have numbers and financials and projections from 28, uh, for 2019. And you should have some information for 2020 already. So that is fine. You will still be eligible to apply. So what type of loan is this? You're eligible. You could receive up to $2 million depending on the revenue in your business. So for some property owners who have multiple property, hundreds of units, um, they have cash flow in excess of you know, a few million dollars a year, they're likely to be approved for higher, higher dollar amounts. These loans can be used to pay for fixed debts, payroll, accounts payable, or any other type of bills you would have ordinarily paid um, had this disaster not occurred, okay? So if you needed help maintaining your, um, your service payments on your buildings while um, because you have tenants who are leaving or tenants that cannot pay, this particular loan can help cover those expenses. The repayment for this loan is up to 30 years. The underwriter decides based on your information what your terms will be, but seven and 15 year terms are the most common. Um, you will have monthly payments, so it's not an annual payment or a quarterly payment, it is a monthly payment. We are fully expecting that the first four and even up to six months of deferrals will be available at the onset of the loan. So that means you won't make a, your first payment for at least four to six months in. The interest rates for smaller businesses um, is 3.75%. So again, if you file a Schedule C, an S Corp, a C Corp, um, a sole proprietorship, um, a partnership, 3.75% is the interest rate for you. So once we file the paperwork, it typically takes about two to three weeks for a loan determination. You know, obviously the SBA only has so many underwriters on staff and they're limited too. So the longer it takes for you to submit your application, obviously this number is going to increase. Right now we are already expecting actually about a four to five week um, loan determination. So if you know you're going to need money to sustain, you need to apply right away. Do not delay, you need to apply right away. You will receive the first check up to $25,000 five days later after loan approval. So these loans are available for nonprofits, small businesses, so that would include um, you, you guys on the call who have businesses within the real estate niche, whether you are a broker, you're a 1099 agent, you have a property management company, or you have multiple um, rental units or apartment complexes, you would qualify. The SBA considers smaller businesses as any business that has revenue that is less than $38.5 million. So this is why it is so important that you go ahead and submit a flawless application. Because in our minds, we don't think of businesses that have $38 million in revenue as small, but the SBA does. And therefore we're competing with those same level of businesses. So you need to make sure you submit a flawless and complete application the first go around. And that is what we help our clients do. And again, they can have anywhere from 100 to 1,500 employees as well, which is also going to vary by industry. So they're being a lot more lenient um, regarding the approval of these loans as well because of what we are experiencing nationwide. And you just really have to think about it. The biggest concern right now is unemployment. You know, right now, unemployment has spiked to over 20% in the last, you know, 10 to 12 days. And we're expecting it to get as high as 40%. Well, small businesses generate about 70% of the jobs in the marketplace. So it's really imperative that the SBA try to make sure that these smaller businesses stay afloat. Because if they go down, that means that's more and more unemployment claims. And when the economy does rebound, we will have a significant amount of unemployment because the small businesses could not survive during this economic decline. So they are willing and ready to make sure that the small businesses 
the real estate investors, the brokers, the agents, they get the revenue they deserve um, and that they need so they can continue their operations. Obviously, the SBA does look at credit history. They do look at credit score. I was on a call this past weekend where they encouraged us to help everyone apply who wants to apply. Really, no matter what your credit score is, you just need to document why your score, if your score is um, really low, you need to document that. Um, you need to tell them what may have happened in your life that caused the decrease in your score. Um, they are also going to be looking at the ability, if you have the ability to repay that loan, okay? Do you have the ability to repay the debt associated with that loan? So right now it's 1.25 um, times your, your revenue is what they're looking for. Um, if you're able to repay that loan. So if your loan payment is $1,000 per month um, and at a 30 year term at 3.75%, that's actually a pretty good loan amount. You know, they're going to be looking to make sure that you can handle that payment. So some of the questions are, um, you know, what if I don't get approved? Um, that is always a possibility, right? It's always a possibility that you won't get approved, which is also the reason why we offer that consultation up front. So you can ask your questions, get your questions answered before you decide to go forward with the application. Uh, however, we look at it from the standpoint of a small investment, because guess what? Getting approved for this loan will make a world of, this, uh, a world of difference for your business. And that's what we aim. We aim to know everything up front so we can figure out how best to position you to the SBA. So again, it requires a non-refundable deposit of $100. Um, that deposit will be uh, applied to your loan application. For anyone else in the marketplace, we offer this package, this loan packaging and assessment at $2,250. But we offer, we're offering it to Gerald and Alexandria's house flipping family group for half that amount. And if you decide to move forward with the full loan application, uh, we will credit the $100 deposit um, to that application. So I am going to see about the questions that we have in the comments now. Um, so, um, Janice, just to let you know, Florida, um, Georgia definitely has some loan programs and some grant programs available. I'll find some links and post them here for you later. Um, Janice, if you're still watching, please let me know what county that you're in so I can see what specific, what specific, um, resources are available for you. Uh, Katie, Texas, absolutely. Houston definitely has a program. I'll also check and see what uh, what Katie has specifically. Uh, LaVon, I think I answered your question about the business being seven months old. Um, yes, that does, that does count. You should still have financials for 2019. Um, so that would apply. Uh, Patricia, can I apply from a new business but have yet to make any revenue. So Patricia, that's going to the pen. I'll need a few more details. Like, are you purchasing this existing business? Do you already have expenses associated with this business? Do you already have properties that you're servicing or you have service payments towards? I'll need a little bit more information. But if you are a new business and you already have um, expenses like debt service arrangements, <clears throat> things of that nature, you should be eligible to apply. Uh, Patricia also said Los Angeles has uh, has a program as well. Um, in fact, there are, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. I think Gerald has posted the comment in the link below if you want to go ahead and schedule a consultation uh, so you can talk uh, specifically with my team to figure out exactly uh, how best to position yourself to apply for that funding. Um, but I'm going to pull up something because I actually have a listing of, I have a listing of um, places that are eligible for additional funding and resources. And I, I just want to share what some of those are right now. And while I'm doing that, I will continue to answer your questions in the comments. Uh, if it's a new business that doesn't have tax returns, is the P&L sufficient? So yes, the P&L, is going to be a requirement. The balance sheet is also going to be a requirement and we will also need projections. 
2019 tax return does not have to be filed. 2018 tax return is sufficient um, if you do not have that. So I want to find this link so I can share with you some additional resources that are available. And if I can't find this link quickly, I will definitely post it when I have it available. But there are definitely some additional resources per municipality. And if I can't find it, you know, just Google your municipality, your county, your city, and figure out if they have a revolving loan fund, if they have their own personal disaster relief loan fund, um, to figure out if there are additional funds that you can apply for, especially if you have real estate property. Okay, so I can't quickly put my hands on it, but once I do, I'll be sure to put it back into the comments. Um, so some other common questions is, if you file for bankruptcy, am I still eligible to apply? Yes, you are. Um, just because you file for bankruptcy or you're still involved in a bankruptcy is not, it's not an automatic uh, means for, the, uh, for decline. Um, if you need more than $25,000, there will be a... Um, you will have to pledge some type of collateral, even if the SBA has to take a third or fourth um, lien position or something, you just have to have something that you can pledge. Right now, there are no origination fees or no application fees or loan fees. And to my knowledge, there is not any closing costs, but we have yet to confirm that. And the reason why we don't think there will be any closing costs is because the closing is handled directly with the SBA. There's not a title company involved um, or anyone else. It's literally between you as the applicant and the SBA. Um, let me see if I can put my hands on a few additional questions that people have regarding this particular loan program. They are definitely, we've had a lot of questions. <laughs> we've had a lot of questions. Let's see. And keep your questions com uh, coming. We, uh, we'll have to depart in just a few moments, but I do wanna make sure I answer any questions that you have. I'll also put a link in the comments below telling you how you can figure out if your county has been declared as one of those counties eligible. In terms of businesses that are eligible, um, as long as that business is not one of a religious institution or a charitable institution, you're eligible. Uh, now, if it's like a child care center or an adult living facility um, that is owned by one of those charitable or religious entities, that entity is eligible to apply. Um, the entity also can't have, um, can't be gambling in nature, can't be like a racetrack or a casino or anything like that. Again, the length of time in terms of the business doesn't really matter. What's more so important is if you have um, any financials, projections, if you bought, if you recently bought an existing business and then this happened, we would need the financials that show, you know, how you made the decision to purchase that build business and then any financials that you may have um, that you compiled on your own would be eligible. Um, let me see, I'm trying to find some other questions that we've had. You must have a physical address. That 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 actually has been a big thing. Um, you know, most people, a lot of people, have just use PO boxes. In this case, you, a PO box is not acceptable. You must use a physical address, even if it is your home address. So I'll be sure to come back and post some additional resources in the group. Let me just confirm we don't have any final questions before I have to depart. 
And again, I want to thank Gerald and Alexandra for allowing me to grace their platform. Um, okay, I don't see any additional questions. So I'll be in and out the comments throughout the day. Gerald has already posted the link if you want to schedule that consultation so you can figure out exactly how you can best position yourself to apply for this funding. Again, you want to do this sooner rather than later because you will have every small business in the country attempting to apply for this money. So you need to get your application in ASAP. And again, we want you to submit a flawless and accurate application the first time, you know, so we can get you approved the first time. Uh, if there are no additional questions, thank you so much for watching. Uh, this is, yes, this is for a business loan based on your personal credit, but the interest rate will not exceed 3.75%. It will not exceed 3.75%. Obviously, the SBA wants to make sure that you have the ability to repay the loan. However, just because you have credit challenges does not mean you're going to be denied. They, they understand um, that small businesses um, have challenges financially and that they need um, additional help and resources beyond what you would find in traditional markets. And when we have disasters such as this, they are definitely more lenient in terms of their underwriting because they do not want the business world to decline. So LaVon, there is not a minimum credit score. However, traditional SBA loans, like you, were, you would apply for at a regular financial institution is um, 640. However, if your score is lower than a 640, it does not mean you will be declined. Uh, we just need to make sure that we explain what has happened. And they have said that specifically. Um, in fact, I believe they're going to remove the credit score from the SBA um, disaster loan page because they do not want it to discourage people. So when you click on the link to book your consultation call, there should definitely be, um, we've allocated time each day specifically throughout the week to talk to people about their options regarding the SBA loan funding. So uh, slots should definitely be available for you to book, um, book a call. Okay, so I will come back and hop into the comments and address any additional questions. Um, as we as we receive those questions, thank you so much once again, Gerald and Alexandra, for allowing me to grace the platform and to share this information. And regardless, what I do not want you to do is to count yourself out. Do not count yourself out. Let the SBA tell you no, but don't count yourself out. Remember, every shot that you don't take is a guaranteed missed shot, and you actually do have a chance of being approved. So don't count yourself out. Make sure you get your questions answered and let's help you sustain during this economic decline. I hope you're having a great day. And if you have any other questions financially, please let me know. I'll talk to you soon.